That's right. Continuing. On and on. How many years now are we going on? Interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed, this is Cricketude Busting episode BTWRLM403 as we move into the new year. As the old year. Operation Hindsight 2020 in full swing. As you didn't really respond, and they figured it out, and so we're going to watch this thing roll down. I'm kind of trying to temper my the the feeling of the ominous feeling I've been getting in the last couple of weeks, as what I told you last year, the pin, the needle in the haystack of noise, may be on its on the verge here. As the resistance continues, uh, well, what little resistance there is is in the people's mind and the fulfillment of the plan that Greta didn't move through. It couldn't, but they're going to get through anyway until people understand, if not if not what I'm saying, better better than what I'm saying, how to respond. I've been asking people to start getting involved quickly to try and get up to speed, engage, start to learn how to engage, learn what you're up against, because it's coming to a point here. Well, I really hate to sound so predictive and ominous about this, but it's coming to a point when it's going to take a whole lot more than you ever would have thought of, or or else it'll be just things will happen to you. It'll be because there's no, you have no position, no point. And they've, uh, they, those they have established, the authority has established authority, given that there's no voice against it. And so I've been asking you to, how to, to develop the voice against it. It starts as simply as writing and getting records made so that you can rely on them. Remember, it's really simple in some regard. You create an administrative question until that's resolved. You at least have a position, a foundational position to start from that there, no one else has authority to act. So even in the, in the administrative side of this, in fact, it might become powerful to preempt a bit of the judicial side from working. And when there hasn't been a, an administrative resolution to it, an executive action, the judiciary is not supposed to have a, an ability to do anything. And so when you have a record, you can put place into a judi- judicial context that says there's an administrative question going on and they have, they have not answered it. And then you attach, you show that in the record it says fraud. You can attack any judicial side att- uh, addressment against you by the government. Now, that's assuming that there's going to be any idea about law. And those of you that are jumping in, some of you are finding out that, well, the Supreme Courts are all compromised. And and this is what I was saying. We've known that, but now we have the lever to pry them off of their holding of your, of your, of your way of life. And that's why it's become so powerful and why I just continue to press on this. I, I don't know, you know how many people are really paying attention to really get fired up about this, but we really are in a different position than I've ever seen in 30 years of my studying all this. It's going back quite a while, maybe 40 years now. Well, yes, 40 years on study. I didn't want to get involved until about probably 30, 35 now. Rolling my sleeves up, figuring it out, and doing your doing our best to get in trouble a bit to try and figure it out. You have to make mistakes before you, you move forward. I'm here to try and limit those mistakes you might make. Before I move on too much further, this is... Uh, uh, the comments. I got to Spreaker. I found a couple comments. Thank you very much for the comments at Spreaker. And thank you, Grammy Mary, for allowing us to put, allowing me to put that up there. And folks, this is now, we're being, uh, all the syndicators are being hit. They're not able to post the broadcast. So if you ever thought about presenting uh, my broadcast and getting it out in the world, this is the time. We need more and more support to bring the word out as, uh, as people who are mirroring my broadcast are being taken down or suspended at some point until some future time like i think uh, normalization of ignorance there the, he can't post for another till march so i'm not sure if it's on this broadcast the point is that the youtube sensors are really hitting it hard so we have to be going elsewhere but the american uh, about the american spirit giving up the ghost is the last broadcast and uh slow burn 678 commenting very good points felt compelled to give you an attaboy thank you Let's move this beyond just that. I, I hope last week in particular, the Nashville, that's an interesting ongoing thing, which has kind of disappeared itself quick. 
the, the point is, is I want people to focus on the end game that that's actually afoot. And you can subvert all that. So that's what I'm wanting to po- focus on, on, on these things in the news. And Valerie Kell, thank you for your comment. I must have missed that the week before. Commenting uncensored here on Spreaker can be found elsewhere. Be careful where you mirror. Don't get censored yourself. And that's right. We, we need to find other places than the censorship. And this was the plan to set us up. It can be much talked about about the way this has been done. In fact, at the end of the broadcast, I'm well. I'm not going. I'm going to give in the broadcaster. I'm going to have some links. But a gentleman way back, maybe in the 70s, that told us how this works. And I'll, you'll have you, you need to spend the hour and a half or so to to listen to that. He'll tell you exactly how this works. This is like not even new stuff. We're watching every bit of it, and as part of it is uh, they tell us fairy tales. You're going to fear, and you're going to tell a tale. going to tell a tale, tell, tell a tale to you, and it's to to make you scared and afeard. And, and and you're going to be that way whether or not you vehemently object to it and say otherwise and scream and yell and don't actually get involved. Your lack of engagement to stop it for you is that same condition. I don't know what more to say. It's not me telling you what to do or not to me telling you to do anything other than if you don't, this plan, this, they call that that reset. I told you this was the transformation of your whole way of life into the new normal. In the newer normal, and by any name, this has been happening. All right, all this, all these things are coming down the way you are. Uh, and getting back to the uh, broadcast of mirror uh, sites or syndicators, Sound Minds is trying to move everybody into uh, True Tube li- dot Live on his account. There, True Tube Live slash channel forward slash Sound plus Minds, and uh, get everyone who wants to see some of the videos, uh, some of the content that I. Uh, I'm talking about, even it's on the video as he runs it, move on over to there, move from YouTube, because he's got two accounts now that are in jeopardy. So, again, we're, we're going to have to be mobile on some of this. And uh, some of you that have been contacting me on communication platforms, this, I'm looking into it. It's not quite so simple, but it's they're getting easier to, to do. I've got a lot of people to think about as far as all the different platforms and all the different you know, model, excuse me, companies that have comp- uh, have the uh, devices and then something that's kind of simple hasn't quite yet come to fore, at least to my awareness. I'm moving on some other, some new ideas, but to break it private, to keep it from people, uh, to not telegraph what we're doing. I'm a, I had enough evidence in my experiences to to know that even though we think, like especially when, what was it, uh, Yahoo, I, I was communicating with people, and we'd find out, I'd find out as we were communicating through Yahoo, it, it sure seemed like when we got to a place, they were anticipating that we were coming. And so I transferred some communication from somebody over to somebody else, and we found out we were able to gain the advantage again, at least to get get accepted in a filing paper and all that. So I have a, I believe I've, I have an idea that they do look in on what we're doing, and I don't agree that we should put ourselves in a disadvantage that way. So anyway, that's why I try to make things as private to us not that we're doing anything bad, not that we have anything to hide. Well, we do have something to hide. We have your objective to stop the criminal, and they want that intelligence. This is a military thing. I don't know how many people are going to disregard this. We're absolutely in a military condition, and intelligence is all key. And if you look through history, you'll find having intelligence on technology was key to defeating somebody that was after you or you were after them for whatever reason. Now, so Sound Minds is now trying to move over to True a True Tube Live. At this point, I don't understand most and all of it. All these things with these platforms. It's partly why I chose Real Liberty Media, but we can try to mirror some of this stuff and get people to get the message. We, again, this is all about us not listening to me. This is about finding out what you may didn't might not have known to do that you can do to protect yourself. I feel I've been having a pretty ominous feeling when we went through this year and nobody really responded too well. And we didn't, get the, we didn't get the mass of people testing the system. I hear this big old thing's coming up. Maybe I think it's the 6th or something in Washington, D.C. Well, why don't you guys do so? You're going to go down and you're going to show up. Why don't you do something this time? Why don't you walk up those steps now and walk right in and occupy Congress until they figure you get this thing straightened out? But you won't. And so this is my problem with our actions. If we're going to choose to commit to an action, fulfill the accomplishment by doing. Completion. Not halfway. And so part of this, going back to the censorship thing of the different voices, 
what's interesting too on YouTube, some accounts get held, uh, some account broadcasts are okay and some aren't. So there's a very targeted. I think you all have stock. Certain people get stalkers on channels, and they keep, and and with the condition such as it is that the the platforms don't really have to answer to it, then to their decision that, that it becomes a you know a slam fest for anybody who has any complaint. And so uh, in that line, we have uh, this week Monday. Maybe already happening today. Assange and uh, Pilger in debate on propaganda facts and fake news from 2017. On Consortium News, I just want to point out that the point, the statement here is uh, an old. This is an old interview with John Pilger and and Assange and Jonathan Heywood Haywood that is talking to you to tell you that Julian Assange, the decision in his case to go attack journalists, is is going to happen. Monday. So uh, this is, to me, a big deal. This is what drives the whole, part of the whole thing, the attack on on free speech, essentially. Whatever you feel about Julian Assange or, or not, uh, even if you don't have a feeling, this is uh, the decision here is coming in that court. I've talked a little bit about it, but it's, I think it's a bigger issue than we all understand, and it just is telegraphing what our problems are in platforms around the world, essentially, and the Internet as such that it is. And so this is a slow murder of Julian Assange. They're going to then, if they win, uh, the United States wins, they're going to extradite him to the United States, and then he'll he'll be hit by some other thing, the whole time supposedly innocent in jail. And and, and anyway, so I I just want to mention that. I I think it's a a very important thing. If they'll attack someone like Assange, as I said, the, the people, as I talked about last week, the government, the foreign government within a government or a government agreement, uh, the Holomador, uh, it comes upon you. And this is what we're seeing here. Just parts of it. As, I, as it came to me, that's what I felt. We're looking at all the aspects that does that. and It just changed the subject matter. It's not just a, it's a famine of, of quality information. It's a famine of the food. It's a famine of housing. It's a famine of being of the freedom, actually. The, the famine of law actually working destroys you. And so if people aren't seeing this, I really don't know what more to uh, to do. And I'll just keep plugging away and working with people that decide that they want to step up for as as unfamiliar as that is to people. Uh, mur- mur- speaking of murder, murder mystery. Uh, this is one hit my funny bone. Not so funny, but I'm, I just wanted to rhyme, remind us of something so we get too, don't get too wild because, again, this uh, climate change sits underneath this COVID. Uh, murder mystery. Murder mystery, a funny bone point here. A panic strikes following mass death of crows in India amid COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the uh, twist of a phrase, murder is a group of crows. So, at any rate, we, I wanted us to see they're tying the COVID-19 to environmental things as well, continually. But I, I've also seen that, and this happens, and I want to remind us, I've seen this seemingly every year over the last few years now as the news keeps promoting it. As, as Greta was try, was coming to the coming to the scene, that environment was was important, and then everybody also attaches their um, their conspiracy theories onto this. In this time of year, apparently, we're seeing a, we're at least hearing about a lot more bunches of birds dying in lots of places. I think it just happened in Rome as well. So I wanted to just mention this. I thought this was funny. Murder mystery. It, it is a mystery why these birds are dying. I don't know why. I guess we can go off, but until someone sits down and really figures it out. I see they use it for talking, kind of t- attaching COVID, and that became important as I was, and thank you to a listener for giving me a heads up, as I was talking about the Holomador and the, the famine and that the COVID is acting like that relative to, well, everything. It, it just covers everything. It is what what the sustainable development was after. It is what I told you back in 2010 or 2012 was the Modernization Act, the Congress coming in to bed, feather the bed before they started pulling this on you. But we get into now livestock with this story it came a few days later, the knowledge to me. Uh, someone I've talked about before but never got back to me about someone they had found in Australia, a friend of theirs, who got who were getting beat down, and I told you how to deal with that. No one, No one really contacted me to further that, and I never heard. Anybody picking it up or just telling, or even on the other side, just telling me I was full of it. 
Nobody, nobody seems to do that either. But at any rate, the pigs catch COVID. UK bans free chickens, free range chickens. The war on meat came in, coming from a Ice Age farmer. You can, I'll give you the link to that if you want to hear it. The beginning of his reports important to show that, uh, in fact, a year, week after I'm telling you they're after your food. We see this before. It's now consolidated in the in the news that they're coming with COVID to come after your food. Uh, and uh, research shows pigs susceptible to COVID-19 was the article you'll get. You can read. You can start to see. When you read in these and you understand this more of what I've been telling you, how to read uh, the magic decoder ring, you'll see very quickly this is really more of a test. This is a, These are multiple-use tests. This is a test to see about because pigs have a response in, in tissue and thing as people do. This looks to me to be a test about droplets. This is more the point as well that they're trying to validate that masks are something. It's going to be something they can use to, to press masks continually. But a new study in Iowa State University and Canadian Canucastinian partners found pigs can become infected with coronavirus after inoculation. So this is the, the jab. They did an experimental ino- ino- inoculation. This is a nasal injection. Now, I don't understand. They also used a ex- lot greater uh, concentration. So I don't know how that equates to having a loogie blown in your nose and you getting COVID. But this is what they're doing to test. This is what they're trying to test here for so-called droplets. Uh, they didn't do an aerosol test because they don't have to. They've got everybody focused on the harm coming. and uh, But this is more important that there are, there's a double thing going on here. You're supposed to be, you, you, friends and listeners, are deemed to be animals. You actually see this in the end of these stories and studies. Uh, you're deemed to be an animal and you're a threat to the, uh, the nature. And so this is a two-way uh, door. Not only will they say that you are are then allowing the pigs can be susceptible and therefore they may die and they have to take your food away, they can then now put restrictions on you because you're threatening nature. And so the Ice Age Farmer talks through this. Uh, there's a whole lot more that he mentioned that is going on with these things. Uh, but the study uh, done in Canada infected 16 pigs, re- uh, pigs to research the spread, susceptibility, and symptoms of the virus. I told you susceptibility was a key thing when it be coming up. And here we know they're, they're checking that because they know they're weak there. As I told you, you can just see where they're failing, how they're going to pick it up. This is the SMART method, S-M-A-R-T method, how they watch all your complaints that are not on point. They actually come after the point to fix that ahead of you before you get there in the future. And so this is what I've been trying to tell you how this works so that you can avoid all that. They patch the holes up plausibly, and then you're going to have a little bit, a lot more hard, a little more difficult time to break this thing down. The researchers also say no cases have been reported in domestic livestock through natural infection, but there needs to be more research in how animals impact the spread. Anyway, look at this as a, a two-way door. This is the threat. They're coming after your food. And in the, in the same vein, he talks, uh, there are chickens and hens going to lockdown in the bird flu alert, but the meat and eggs can still be called range-free. So you see now they're just making a mockery of language. You have to lock in the UK, apparently. You will have to lock up your your chickens and birds and hens. Now, and you can still call them free range, so that's fraud. And the way this works is that under the cause, they actually do the harm in their mitigation, which is what I've been telling you. You have to take away their jurisdiction to make that first, and then you'll argue whether or not they have the right to put do two things, call them free, force the value of free range out. See, no one's paying for that. In the UK, I don't know what you have over there in the UK for your uh, takings of your property uh, and necessarily your production and your livestock, which in the United States is considered a s- sabotage, a criminal act. So I'm not sure how this works over in the UK, but you see how they now, COVID now extends and now we get the bird flu coming back, the pigs fly flu, it all comes down to the chickens. Now you can you have to stick them in the worst way. I don't know if anybody of you have kept chickens, but keep them in a small pen in a, an enclosed place is the worst thing you can probably do for lots of reasons. But they'll for, they force that mitigation, supposed missed a mitigation measure on you, and you're going to have unhealthy livestock. So it doesn't matter if you agree 
or you don't, you're going to lose it in the end, and you're going to lose what? The meat. You're going to be eating that synthetic stuff. Everything's going to be synthetic life. Which is these synthetic vaccines, the synthetic tests, we're going to talk about that. Cats and dogs. So I wanted to look, well, what are they doing if they're testing the animals? Because this is what is the uh, the nature needs to be protected from you. Uh, they must be testing lots. Well, the COVID-19 tests given to cats, dogs, dolphins, and more, more animal species by U.S. scientists. And so they've been doing all these tests. Well, what tests are they using? The, the PCR test. And so they actually agree and admit that these RNA fragments, whether they're live or not, is not tested in PCR. Are in every, most, and most all mammalian vertebrates, or vertebrates, I think they say. And so you can see that they are on the move. They've been on the move all the time. You've been sitting in your house for a year, not addressing this, not kicking, ki- knocking out the jurisdiction that they're making the decisions on. That would make all this irrelevant. You know, you're, you're listening to it. You come, watch it come, watch it come through as they build the record against you all. And I've been really, that's, I guess, what I'm watching. I'm watching this thing. It's coming to a point when the record, they're starting to patch the holes. They're getting into places now as you read the rec- read the studies. They're getting into terminology that gets very hard to start f- ferreting. There's another test of ferrets too, right? Ferreting out how they're violating, how they're they're deceiving you with all these new new terms. And this is how they overwhelm most of us. And they might be getting to the point where they're overwhelming me in that because I just can't keep up in a week to get through everything we're doing and then also kind of track down for this broadcast, uh, the things. Uh, no one thinks, mam- uh, going to the dolphins, which got, caught my mind, no one thinks mam- mamer- marine animals will play a big role in the pandemic decimating the, the human population. But testing many creatures on both land and sea is vital. We don't know what this virus is going to do or can do. In fact, they don't even know what the virus is. They don't have a test. They don't have an, an isolate. We'll get to that, too. There's a, All these terms are being violated by a new vocabulary, and you have to keep up with that. Let me move on back and back in history. President queries Tanzania got coronavirus kits after goat test. Well, had I really read that, see, goat's not a big food item where I live, so I didn't think of it this way. But when they did that test, and he found out the PCR test was testing lots of positive, and it will because of what it does. Anyway, it, it's an RNA. It looks for particular RNAs. You can adjust that. You have to program the test in order to pull out certain RNAs. Some of the the primers they use are coded for uh, being able to identify things. All that is a big question relative to identification. But in this case, if I'd have known and looked at the goat relative to going after the using this to go after your food. Goats are food in certain parts of the country where, in the world where they're not where I'm at. And now I can see if I'd have actually stepped back one more step than what I did, I would have been able to predict this was notice that they're coming after your food way back when. So this study was about susceptibility. I give you the link for that from that I tracked down from the video. Uh, susceptibility of do- domestic swine to experimental infection with re- severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2. So here they're in the title, they're claiming that they actually are responding to this supposed cause, right? The cause that has never been found. It's only been an implied, right? It's been implied presumption based in a model. Don't ever forget this. And they haven't strayed away from that at all. And so got to look very carefully on how this is. Most people will just turn their mind away from it. They won't read through. They won't analyze how they are making a record that's completely fraudulent. The entry of this document is fraudulent, where it actually calls SARS-CoV-2 the cause, just as they've been fraudulent from the beginning. Okay? And so this is where they have a problem there. That's their Achilles heel. The symptoms can range from asymptomatic to mild or severe. How can asymptomatic, where asymptomatic is actually just a technical term of jargon that actually means healthy. And this is what they do. How, do, how can the symptoms be ranging from no symptoms is another fraud right here in the first paragraph. And it, so if you look very carefully, you can, the first paragraph is all the fraud that they're using to substantiate the need. And I think this is the study, is this the study that I, um, I'm thinking this is the one, all these studies I've been reading, 
this is the one where I finally came to the idea, I better look for what are the conflict of interests. And in, interestingly, this study doesn't have one. It doesn't have, does not have a disclaimer or a conflict of interest statement. And why, uh, what I started to think about that, where they're relating to the World Health Organization and where they relate to the, pro the programs and projects, it caused my mind to go back about, okay, well then, if they're relating to projects, if they're promoting within these decisions these organizations, then there can't be a conflict disclaimer. And uh, when I went looking, I didn't find one. So this is exactly the point. This, these studies are actually tailored for what they're trying to promote. And when you understand that, you can start to bring that more into your understanding, your deeper understanding on how to start to fight that. And so we see again, as you go through this, they only use the art. There's nothing new in the tests. There's nothing new in how they did the isolation. There's nothing new. There's a question actually built in. They tell you, and again, this comes out of the Netherlands, and I want you, those of you that are Constitution, remind yourself, go back and remind yourself of what Article 6 in the Constitution says. Not the Bill of Rights, I'm talking about the Constitution. And the outstanding debt to the Netherlands was never paid. And I told you, there's an interesting consistent, continuing priority in the news for the Netherlands and all of these things as well, which I haven't really stepped back to think about, but it just I just find the coincidence pretty interesting. It also says it's a, where anthroponotic transmission from humans to farm mink, they're talking about the minks here in Netherlands, was proposed to, with su subsequent, proposed with sub subsequent zoonotic transmission, humans to mink. When you look at all the what they're saying, they're saying all of this is really not normal, that it could do that. that they actually, in one of these studies, will talk that the, they try to say the bat thing somehow was a transmission to humans when they say right in the same study that it, it's really rare to that for that to happen. And that rarity has not been answered to. Why? Because they're not talking about anything real. They're talking about models. And no one's proven past the model past the implication that was promoted by China. And so we, and, and remember, okay, I don't want to go through, like my mind wants to go through all the, the lineage of how we get to China through through the military working with Kanukistan and, and, and in the United States itself and all the, and all the same, the same players in this, uh, in this event, this ongoing exper experiment, whether they can keep you quiet and whether you will, in 2020, they said they showed you that you will, whatever your whatever your objections are, and so they say this is a the experimental. They say exactly how they went about trying to do this study, and when you read through this, you'll find that there's really no susceptibility. There's very little transmission inside the pigs themselves. But remember how much they're doing. This is not wasn't just you walking through a room. This was a, an experimental, intense injection of of what they thought they were, what they thought was SARS-CoV-2, and then they say, I think later in this decision, I'm my 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 notes didn't didn't hold for here to talk directly in it. You'll you have to find this yourself, which I really prefer that you start reading the words because it tells you a lot. They they could not find any live virus ultimately. Okay, so uh, I think this is also the one that they tell us that they use an isolate, and this is the trick. The isolate has a funny definition in my mind that they defin define isolate as, as essentially, as I've been saying, in, in example, the guy that came off the jet from China in what to Washington state that starts it all is that isolate. It's a swab taken out the inside of his nose. That's the isolate. They isolated what they thought was the cause from somebody and then they started to replicate that. That was never a test, never identified to be SARS-CoV-2. And with the fact that it's likely a flu uh, influenza, or likely, and I don't think it's a common cold coronavirus, I don't think it's that, but it, let's go there a bit. They don't know, They those are not novel. Remember, we've gone way far from the novelty of this, and now we're just into everyday seasonal th things that we are told will mutate. Well, isn't that what's happening in the UK right now? They're actually, how they're seeing this, I don't know, because they haven't been able to find this other one, but they're saying this is mutating. 
they have all their, when you start reading, they have all their science, but it's scientism, it seems to me. When you have to, it's like uh, some witch in a cauldron, you got to put your uh, eye of newt with the, whatever the, you know, the wing of bat, there's your wing of bat, then you got to drink this stuff at the, you know, full moon right after the corn withers and all this other stuff. That's what this looks like. And that's how they're proving all of this. And anyway, so this is an important thing. They're trying to prove susceptibility. As I told you, they find actually no susceptibility. They find some interaction, but uh, the isolate is a question. And so I typed in, went to, uh, they respond on where they got this, uh, this, this isolate. And so I went over to the G-I-S-A-I-D, S-A-I-D. This is USAID. This is another CIA front. Now you type in the number. I typed in all kinds of numbers to try and find this isolate. It wasn't in their their database, which it's supposed to be. Maybe you'll have better success and you can send me a, an email to explain how I failed, but I could not find the isolate. I could find a lots of other ones, which is, it's all instructional. When you read this, you see everything that's available, supposedly, and all this is, is that when you see it, the isolate happens to be the swabbing. Everybody who's ever been PCR tested created an isolate. None of them created one that isolated the organism, the causal organism. None. And you won't find any jurisdiction throughout the world that is certified to that. And that's the what I feel is the Achilles heel in every jurisdiction and the delegation of jurisdiction, authority, and communicable disease in every place, everyone, for you all to be able to exploit if that's what we're doing to save ourselves. And, but they talk about neutralizing antibodies as the test that they use. And this started to talk more to what I told you they're going to be moving, having to move into T cells. But this, then, if you look about it, neutralizing antibodies are B cells. They're actually coming from, I think, the bone marrow. Now, this is a deeper thing. And it seemed to me neutralizing antibodies would not be doing suscept be, be testing for the susceptibility where they say there's no transmission. It, it might actually say how it doesn't be, transmi be is transmitted, and maybe that's the inverse of that last study. And I have to admit to not being totally at all technically experienced to understand fully what I'm seeing in all the terminology, and so I have to leave out a bit of fact, the fact of, of what that test is actually doing. I can see the swinging two-way door they're using it for. They'll blame you, or they're going to blame the animal. Either way, you're going to lose. You're not going to get the food, or you're going to be kept away from food. And we, we see they're testing this stuff everywhere, trying to test it on the, what, in, in Brazil. We see all the tests that are proving positive. That's just without any question. They're not questioning the veracity of it. This test is for neutralizing antibodies, B cells that actually would, the theory would be, if, even if you can agree this with this, that that would be neutralizing the, the viral contaminant, not in aiding it. So it's not really, the susceptibility is in our body's ability to stop it naturally. What they did is they put an artificial, a synthetic, a synthetic vector, if you will, infectious agent, they claim, one that was made up and checked it out. And we find all collateral problems with that as well. And so I read up a little bit about neutralizing antibodies, so I have links for you. It protects against severe, severe COVID-19, so it doesn't protect completely. It doesn't immune, immunize you. This test for this would say that it would protect you from a severe response if this is true. This is what I say. Most of this stuff, I really have I'm part of my mind saying you can't believe any of this because there's really no science. It's scientism. It's a witch's cauldron of discussion. I, some of it could be very valid. Some of it's very interesting. Some of it's pretty fantastic. I don't mean fantastic in the fantastical. I mean, it, it's pretty neat that we could look at this. But when we find out it's not much different than cosmology, and they make stuff up as they go, and they build up their house of cards with toothpicks, as they built up, it, it, you start to realize that we're just a bunch of con artists are out there, uh, conning us uh, on what's really going on. This is my needle in the noise discussion last year. I said, be careful, they don't have a real thing. The the indication is now they do have a real thing, and it's maybe on the, again, coming on top. But they're trying to make and plug all the holes in records. They're trying to make new technology. It all ends up being re refined down to the same thing because the ultimate test is the PCR, and it's all coming from a non-pure source. That's 
a source that was isolated from its origins, not an isolate of the contagion. And then not through any process. Whether or not you agree with Cook's principles or not, there's some problems with that principle set. The point is that they've never really shown what it is and then caused someone to be infected and then shown how their body responds and then see how that develops and whether or not that's actually novel. Again, remember, this is not novel. It's just the flu. It's just influenza, which remarkably is under, I think, 1% at this point. And so I read up more about the FDA authorizes first test to detect neutralizing antibodies. Another story about how they do this. Again, it's all in how this may, may, see that they don't even know how it may stop, neutralizes the antibodies, uh, uh, the, the antibodies of how w it will affect you and not, not how it, not how it infect, how it, uh, your body responds to it. So there's a, if you want to know some more about this, I think you need to get a little bit of an idea relative to their tests. So you can see as they move this thing through and they ob obfuscate the put more curtains in front of the, the magic trick. As you start peering around the curtains, they put more. The, you need to be able to see how, the, how they're doing that. These stories, these stories go through and they explain a lot of how this works. So I guess these links for what I was looking at for you, it's a more synthesized explanation, which is fair enough. It's not, I didn't, I can't prove it ultimately truth, but it looked fair enough in looking how they explain how, how this thing works. And I say neutralizing doesn't mean killing, for instance, SARS-CoV-2. It means prevention, preventing infection, as from a professor. So you start learning these words, you start learning what they're doing, and you look at, they're still looking at antibodies. That has to be PCR. You look, there is no test, at least, and there is no isolate as a virus, and you start realizing this is, again, built on a house of cards. Looking another evaluation of surrogate SARS-CoV-2 neutralization tests, I found, to explain more about this. And I went here, found more interested in this surrogate. Surrogate. This is like what the SARS-CoV-2 is. It's a, it's a, it's an, an analog to an actual virus. It's a model that they could put in their witch's brew cauldrons and the eye of newt, wing of bat, and you got something that's supposed to be of, uh, hurting people. And this is where getting back to them using this neutralization test for the detection of antibodies in human, canine, cat, or hamster seria in your blood. So this is also inter interesting to read, I believe. This is where they're looking for whether or not it changes your blood. Now, I, that invoked the idea of Clint Richardson's new lethal injection to corruption of blood, where they look for your cells being changed. In this case, they're also, it destroys the cells somehow, and they look for that. But this is not a live thing. This is a neutralization test. So, I, But I found interesting the statement about containment, because they've been telling us that this is a class 4 contain, a biohazard, a biosafety level class 4 for these communicable diseases. And in this test, it starts out saying that they were looking for a test that would do, uh, be able to be handled in something less than a class a level 3. And so I'll read that. Virus neutralization assays are used for confirming positive results but require handling live virus in biosafety level 3, BSL-3 containment, or a pseudotyped virus. That's the novel man-made stuff. And so they're making tests to see how, I told you that they were making, they have tests to see where their product is. And so I went through just on this document to give you something to go look through. And so we talk about, again, this live virus and the BCL-3 containment. Remember, these communicable diseases are treated in BCL-4s. And they're already talking this test is to be done in BCL-3 for SARS-CoV-2. How is that possible? So SARS-CoV-2, as I'm looking at this, is not B, uh, BS, uh, BSL-3 uh, 4 uh, uh, communicable to start off with. A surrogate virus neutralization test. Okay, so we're not even dealing with, it's all synthesized what they're doing. They're doing a, a, a different type of test now, which I found fascinating. A test the SVNT that can be done in a BCL2 containment. Well, how is that real possible when you have a swab that has supposedly BCL uh, BCL4 containment measures on a swab in a BCL2 to make the test? How do you do that? Unless it's actually BCL2. This whole thing is not even sore. It's not communicable that way. It's just the common cold. By reading through, if you will, a different look at looking look at this these standards. 
It goes on to explain what this surrogate test is, that they don't need live virus. And it doesn't talk about live virus, so it's not telling you actual susceptibility. This test is an assay that relies on competitive inhibition of the interaction of the ACE2 receptor coated on the ELISA plate with horse radish peroxidase labeled virus spike receptor binding domain. What? Horse radish? That's supposed to throw, well, I guess that's how we get papaya. Papas will successfully show uh, synthetic. See, it's a surrogate. It's not the real thing. You're living in an altered reality here. But here's what the most important point was of all this for me relative to these, these new tests that are coming out, apparently looking at susceptibility, maybe, which would have been nice if they went for the T stuff, I think. We used, it says, we used a panel of sera from patients and animals with RT-PCR confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infection. Let me stop there because there's an end. How did they do that? They can't confirm SARS-CoV-2 with this, so this statement is false. But it's confirmed in their mind. Because they're given license to do so by the criminals who are foisting this con upon you. Let me read on. And so they use the PCR, a PCR test to confirm SARS-CoV-2 that no one in the world has done ever. And corresponding controls to evaluate this NVNT assay in comparison to the gold standard PRNT-90 test. But they're comparing it to what? The PCR, essentially. And guess what they find out in this test? It correlates 100% with that test. What does that mean? It means it's no better than the 95% er erroneous PCR test. Okay, that's my take. You can read for it otherwise. I'd like you to. I want you to check my work. So these things are, again, set up, uh, the house of cards set up with, uh, now, now we're trying to pile more with toothpicks, trying to build a, the house to a babble here, and you're going to buy it. You've bought it for a year. I'm really dismayed somehow, but it keeps coming out. It keeps coming out how they're doing it to us. If you have not listened sufficiently to engage yourself, be motivated to work to keep yourself up to speed, this ship will be so far out to sea, you won't be able to row fast enough for it to reach its destination and then hurt you. You'll be out lost at sea relative to what they're doing to control how you're getting in. You'll never get to land again. So containment is not even level three, and they're saying this test can be in level two, is not a level four communicable disease by this test. Moving on, as we move through, there's tons to read through here. I wanted to just verify my borrow safety levels, the BSL 1, 2, 3, 4. I have a link for you to look at. And sure enough, you go down to bio level 4. If you want to see just quickly what that means, then you'll see all the communicable diseases at BSL 4s sitting there that they should be. And when you get back up, back up, I went down to the bottom, and there's Ebola, SARS-CoV-2. That's an invention right there, right? They have Central European encephalitis virus, hemorrhagic virus, hemorrhagic viruses. All these things may be real, folks. I don't know, don't even know anymore. But they're at the BSL level four. You go way back up to BSL level two, where they think this test can be run. They can pull a swab out of a BSL level two, uh, level two containment, and it's perfectly fine to run a test on. I suppose means that it's a level two. And the organisms that you you find find there are only marginally worse at two than the first, which is really the more simpler stuff, like the still sick, it'll still ki it can still kill you, actually, but it's less virulent, and this is where the E. coli, the lactobacillus, the syphilis, acidophilus, uh, the neurospora crassa, these types are sitting there, serotomus or incens is sitting in the SL1, and the SL2 is just more, because there's not much of a list for the two, more than those. The organisms for BSL-2 are E. coli, a stronger one, the Staphylococcus, Salmonella, Plasmodium, Taxoplasma, and I think this is a misspelling, herpes simplex, I think it is supposed to be, but it says simples, simples viruses. These are the BSL-2. doesn't show me that, that 
SARS-CoV-2 is communicable. And if it is, I mean, salmonella, we need to clear all the, all the dead fish off the, off the rivers because that's where a lot of that also happens that we hear every year dogs dying from doing, eating that and maybe cats. So the, the prior study on the surrogate neutralization to me explained to me, this is the, certainly another proof that it's not what they say it was. And again, you, this is part of the fraud. And this would be if you ever got tangled into in a discussion, you'd bring these things to show that the experts, what the experts say are, are fraudulent to begin with. And again, there's a house of cards that they're now stacking toothpicks on to continue to build the, the Tower of Babel to confuse us. Uh, then I wanted to point out here that there's been a communication. This start, parts of this started out about part of the story about what tested positive was that Coca-Cola tested positive. And so the USA Today wanted to weigh in. Fact check improper use of COVID-19 tests gives false positive to Coca-Cola. Well, we, what I'm using this link for, again, is a consolidated place for your study. There's lots of links in there. You can go look for yourself. I found the link of where the company uh, that the PM uh, in UK said that Coca-Cola brought a positive test. Uh, they came out and said, well, here's the test and here's how it's supposed to be done. He did it wrong. When you look at the test they do on the video, I don't know how they can substantiate that as a as a test, a proper test either. Even when you give them cut editing, editing of the video, they're still, we don't know what we're looking at. And so this is all magic tricks. This is no, like a, I, when I saw it, I noticed that the, this is just like what happened in chemistry class when you're doing base acid neutralization with indicators. When a, when you put a, a neutral when you neutralize something or, or you acidify something and you have an indicator that's responsive to that pH, it either goes clear or it shows up as a color. It, that's just magic. I mean, for most people, it's what we're I think we're looking for. I, I wanted to propose the that they say that COVID shouldn't test positive. I say, well, if it does, then maybe Coca-Cola needs to go away. However, this is a joke that starts to come on, and you need to look very carefully on how this works. To me, I don't need to worry about Coca-Cola and PCR. I know that there's no test and there's no certification to an infectious agent, which is where every government gets their authority to do anything. And without that, you don't live in a in any kind of a a lawful any law there's no law i don't even know what to say i don't know how to describe this this condition it's lawless you have no remedy when it's lawless you have no remedy and part of the problem is we've had infiltrators in that remedy that again we're calling out we're we're call we're having to call out the entire system and challenge it to be up front and start showing whether or not they're going to comport to law that is printed in black and white, or they're going to tell us that they're not. And that's an important thing for all y'all that want to go to the Second Amendment. As I've tried to explain to you in Virginia, and the 95% agreement that the Second Amendment should not be violated, and how the Constitution allowed a, ve a way, a pathway for you to do what you needed to do, and you failed, is the same answer here. You're going to need to be able to delineate how this fraud is perpetrated and how there is no authority in the government and where you can show, per and this is what would have helped if we had a lot more, more people coming forward, where a properly argued fraud will not get immediate response by the courts. I don't need really any more to know as far as giving a power to people like want to go on the, to six down to the, go into the Congress. Yeah, this is also a commerce-related problem because they're interfering with Congress. They're coming after your chickens. That's sabotage. That's wartime stuff, and we're in war. So you can use everything I've told you where everyone thinks we're, you know, they've eliminated the wartime stuff. And I said, no, there's at least two still hanging out, trading with the enemy. Act says there's war on war. They were declare war on drugs. They declare all kinds of wars. We're in wartime, and they're coming after your chickens by this fraud. It is sabotage. It's a high-level crime. I've been talking to you about all this stuff for years, and I don't understand why people don't put the two and two together to defend yourself. So I get a little bit irritated, but that's, again, I can't, I can only suggest uh, only so much, like 12 years. Major COVID vaccine glitch emerges. Most Europeans, including hospital staff, refuse to take it. You think? So here comes the, the resistance, if you will, in the first order of the first people that were supposed to get it. All is not going to according to plan in the biggest global rollout of what is arguably the most important vaccine 
in a century, and it is not just growing U.S. mistrust in the COVID injection effort that was rolled out in a record time, an unexpected spike in allergic reactions to the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, and now Moderna, too, may prove catastrophic to widespread acceptance unless scientists, technocrats, scientism, can figure out what is causing it after the FDA's rushed approval and is also why, as we reported yesterday in a link, scientists are scrambling to identify the potential culprit causing the allergic reaction. Well, how about the vaccine? The vaccine is the culprit. How about the lie? How about the synthesis? How about the unintended consequences? They already know what the answer is. That's a lie. That scramble is a fraud. The suggestion that they're scrambling is a fraud. They've already told you in all the paperwork what the problem is. They already know. That's why they set up the reporting agency. And so we find that people are now, I want to get to the point, the word, mistrust. No confidence and no trust. Trust, that's the organization and the establishment of the government that was to secure to you, not secure you, but secure to you the things of your life in peace. Without this, and when you, that's why you have to show the fraud because they've given so much power, without this type of a, an attack. When they come after your food, I told you, they're coming after you in a war, war attack. You know when you seize them. That's Libra Code no, number one. When they come after you through these vaccines, and now they're trying to figure out after the fact how to stop the uh, what causes the adverse re- reaction, you know that the CDC did not protect you, did not secure to you your health, welfare, your life, all the, all the powers. And that proves they are wrong. That proves they're outside of their authority, even if they had it. And when you understand what I've been saying, that's like the third step. You say you don't have jurisdiction. If you did have jurisdiction, then you'd only had a limit. And then when you went this far, you didn't. You stepped back outside of the jurisdiction authority you had when you started causing the harm inside the, the cover of what was supposed to be a treatment. Remember, this is not a cure. This does not stop. This is the symptoms. This is like a day quill, like a night quill, like an aspirin. It reduces symptoms with the attendant harms and risks. Whatever that might be for you, we can never know. And they don't have any tests. That's also the other point. They don't have any tests before you take it. Notwithstanding, all the people that I hear are lining up for miles under the fear they won't get this thing is uh, astonishing. But at any rate, I want better for at least my listeners, and I want I think you want better for yourselves. I think that's why you listen, I hope. And we need to make this next step. All this is evidence of notice to us. They have a bigger problem than just, uh-oh, this is well outside of any authority that was granted in the law, even under an emergency. Wisconsin farmer, and this is a rollout of this, Wisconsin pharmacist who intentionally spoiled more than 500 vaccine doses is arrested. A pharmacist accused of deliberately spoiling more than 500 doses of coronavirus at a hospital outside Milwaukee was arrested Thursday afternoon. He was charged with first-degree reckless endangering safety, adulterating a prescription drug and criminal damage to property. Again, they come under the safety, and yet it's not safe at all. But getting back to this point, he has apparently now asserted that it was an oversight And remember what I want to say, and this is where people knew information, Dr. Carrie Madej had said that she's been in clinical conditions where she didn't understand how a clinic, any anybody handling this specially made novel mRNA experiment wouldn't come into problems. She's never seen a clinic be able to handle this, this, not even this level of control to get for so-called safety. And so someone's maybe maybe sabotaged, I don't know. They're doing what they can to get in the way of it. Maybe saved a whole bunch of lives. Well, the government may say otherwise, even though what we just read is they know they have a problem and they don't know what's causing that problem. And if you understand what I just read about the notice in the news, this doctor, this pharmacist, uh, excuse me, this pharmacist can actually start to use all this if they would, and then you could actually attack it, uh, collaterally attack the fraud, that they even have an authority underneath the vaccine that doesn't have an authority, only under the color of a, color of a, of authority, but, but not at the actual substance of the facts. So again, if we would all understand, in my mind, what we're what we're 
what I've been saying, how to protect yourself, whether this was done intentionally or not. If it was not, then we have an innocent victim of an oversight of a bunch of people. Even if it is, then we have the, the harmful vaccine that's been deemed experimentally unharmful and shouldn't be given to anybody when you start seeing what the CDC is saying when you start to show that you're going to be reactive. The problem for them now is they're actually allowing the reaction first, and that's the irreparable harm. And if we want to see how that works out, these numbers may not seem like a lot, but I think they were, they're despicable what we're going to see here. As I was sent a link to another, um, it was over at uh, YouTube, uh, posting uh, Dr. Vernon, Vernon Coleman's latest, it's only a three-minute video, uh, 3,150 vaccine recipients unable, listen folks, vaccine recipients unable to perform normal daily activities after one, the first corona shot. That was the video. I went and found the document. You can get it too. You can read this. It's anaphylaxis following mRNA COVID-19 vaccine receipt. I want to highlight you this as we're moving over. RNA, mRNA vaccine. Remember, we have the chip jab. It's totally different. Remember those two different vaccines. Uh, remember that these are to, supposed to be dip, supposed to be different novel technologies, even if they're both, any of them are mRNA. But if you roll down to the little chart, you'll see exactly what Dr. Coleman found. Remember, he's in the UK looking at CDC, because this is how integrated the whole world supposed appropriate experts are. And uh, you go down to the chart, it says V-safe, active surveillance for COVID-19 vaccines, obviously is after the fact and can't be safe. But you look at the, we look through the chart, it says uh, registrants with recorded first dose as of December the 18th of 112,807 uh, people and health health impacts events, health impact events of 3,150 people. 514 of which were pregnant. And the double asterisk over health impacts reads exactly what I read in the title of that video. That when you're, the health impacts were such that you were unable, 3,100 people, over 3,100 people by December, of 112,000 people, of the millions that are coming, they say, they claim they're going to try and do. And maybe why you're seeing the UK first responders not balk at 50%, but back here, unable, you're unable to perform normal daily activities, unable to work, required care from doctor or health care professional is the health impacts that you're imposed with. Works out, as I wrote a Twitter, to about 2.79% Harma, with a capital, with a lowercase p leading that, Pharma, Harma. 2.79% of the people getting these are getting harmed to, to a level that they're unable to work, unable to function. Anaphylaxis is not something you want to mess with either. But that rate appeared to me, when you get over to the flu chart of the, of the government, appeared to me to be higher than the influenza that it claims to be stopping. Right now, it's just above 1% for as bad as they're claiming the hospitals are being over one. These people are willing to watch a 2.79% HARMA rate at the CDC. And this is only 112 people that they've got, uh, that have reported. That doesn't mean that everybody's reporting is the other problem. So this pharmacist may be doing people a favor. I don't know. I don't want to put that on him. I don't know what the reason was. I don't know if he got caught from some simple little oversight. Again, you got to handle this stuff really carefully. That shows you it's also a different technology. And you're subject to the taco vendor here now. Well, did they cook that meat just hot enough or not? And do you think now that they get this guy or make a big news that anybody else is going to raise their head? No. And so even if it was something good, it's not something good. So I want to remind everybody as we, we move through and people responding to with their charts, and I, something I posted maybe a week or two ago, and somebody that a, a journalist now, a journalist that's not in jail, wants to show in Tennessee has been a wash of COVID cases, cases in quotes now, which is an interesting change. I've, I appreciated seeing this for months, but mass mandates have had virtually zero difference. 
Here's a comparison of the eight mass versus nine unmasked counties in a geographically similar region in eastern Tennessee from October to December 22nd. The same time period they're doing these vaccines as well, mask mandated areas actually did worse. And so this is another evidence, right? And I say this because this guy in Wisconsin, we've already talked about the Wisconsin Federal Supreme Court there, what they tried to do and then what the governor did around that and no one checked that one. And so she's been still running with the, like the wind there to continue the, the harma and allow it. Remember all these judges that have not stopped it are now, are now the, co- the causal agent of the pandemic of the jabs. Okay. Caused by the jabs. We're now seeing the harm. It, at e- higher than influenza, higher than the common cold is reported now to look through COVID-19. And I respond to that chart by saying you may be interested in this suit explaining why. I'm speaking to a journalist and I'm saying you may be interested in Tennessee in this suit to explain why it gets worse. And that suit is the one at tntrafficticket.us. And that's the one that attacks the fraud of them not certifying and yet making an order, emergency orders, when there's no, when there is no emergency. There's no infectious agent certified, found, determined anything. And then we know there's no test and we see all these tests and all this stuff going on before relative to the inability to be able to find that, at least by the historic review, even back a year now. And I say, guessing can't stop what isn't or can't be identified. There is no test. The governor admitted, Lee admitted, to petition moving to dismiss because he's not subject to any law. No remedy stops his disaster. And this, I'm pointing out, is anybody that comes against this is going to be needing to have their record made and will need to come against it because you're seeing the impetus of the government that doesn't care that it hurts 2.79% of you that had trust and then consented to a treatment that's admitted to cause harm and experimentally at that and experimental tests and experimental processes. Synthetic, even so. On a suggestion of an implied presumption, I don't know how much easier it should be to explain the fraud and the inability and explain that you're looking at charts that are telling you the truth and yet the only question that you have is the mass mandated areas actually got did worse? No kidding. They're irrelevant because they're not doing anything. You're actually imposing more harm. This is a Twitter of a journalist who hasn't done the research to find out that you're interfering with the natural processes of uh, that we already have built into us for dealing with these infectious agents. And we forget that the news promotes the worst of it, and we think it's everywhere. And I was just talking to some people. This year has been kind of interesting. I don't know of anybody, literally the entire year. Folks, I've been here every week with you since the before last year, before it, all the way through, and I'm still here, and I haven't been sick once. I don't even know, I was trying to think, I don't even know if I've had the sniffles this year. And so I don't know what to say about all this. I don't, around me, there's no, there's no, no, no cold. I don't have any cold this year. And so this is proving there's either nothing out there. Or if there is, they're responding incorrectly. And I put that before you before. The problem is we're coming into a new time. This 50% resistance with the healthcare workers the news that it's having trouble, the scientists supposedly scrambling, they don't have to scramble, they know exactly, is all showing the news and the setup that these people that have started to institute this plan, this event, this exercise, are going to make sure that you are impressed completely. And so it, it's going to take measures, even in, in, inadequate measures, but measures nonetheless, which came out one measure which John Rappaport reported on he he believes this is the I don't understand why but he believes this is the the answer to how we stop the PCR uh, but to my mind it's not because it allows the governor to in, continue to foist the false fraudulent emergency on everybody in Florida 
But he reports to us, and this is important, if nonetheless, even this much starts to help, doesn't stop it, the Florida forcing labs to report the number of PCR test cycles. Game changer. If the floor, governor of Florida handles this breakthrough correctly, it could be a beginning of the end of one widespread piece of COVID test fakery and the beginning of the end of rising case numbers. Okay, that's true. You start documenting how many PCR test cycles, and I want to go back to those tests. Look very carefully. They were above 30. They were above 35, and I think one was 40. It's meaningless. Those test cycles, you can only go to 20 before they start to become meaningless. And that's not to identify a thing. That's just to identify RNA dentists because it never identifies a thing. But nevertheless, if you're in a state, if you can get the governor to insist that there's how many cycles it'll be, you can then, then have to go and turn toward the science that says, and the CDC says, anything above about 25 cycles is meaningless. They're running everything 35 and up. And so the point is, if you understand what you're looking at, John makes a contribution again that's valuable. I don't agree that this is the boom that he thought it was, but it can help. It can help keep you underneath the 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 keep you underneath the emergent the fraudulent emergency, but will give you a point to say what that wasn't proper. You get to keep clubbing me, but not that hard in that spot. And so I agree this could be important that we get the facts out. A governor orders it; it's his report; it's his emergency anyway, right? But the fact that he puts it out, it wasn't out before still continues his authority, which is my bugaboo on this whole entire thing. And this is what I respond to someone else in, I'm going to bring this back as well, someone else in, in Florida, who's a representative, Anthony Sabatini, I get no response on any of this stuff, folks, but I then relate to the Tennessee case, and I said, well, he wants to make a bill. You see these bills fall short, like someone I just said, uh, he said they're going to they're gonna audit the Fed. I said, how is the CAFR not already doing that? How does the CAFR not fulfill auditing the Fed? You're going to bring a brand new bill to do what? what? What's the And 40 people support that. But that's just, to me, unless he can answer how it doesn't fulfill it, is it just ignorance? Same thing here. Fire Fauci. Fire Fauci has nothing to do with all this. It's local. Fire the locals who did not certify the infectious agent. I, I tell him, why not make him irrelevant and expose the fraud? Compare local communicable disease code against their election of local public health officials to comply with their duties and fraudulently creating a crisis. Similarly as this guy, and that's the Tulis, uh, re Tulis report complaint with the link, and I ask, represent the people, right? Where is the representation of the law that the people made to keep and secure to you your freedoms and those police powers they claim to be using to protect you. Why do we do this thing outside of that? If we make fraud, fraud she, Fauci irrelevant, we make everything that they're using irrelevant. And you do that by circumventing the entire system that's being used to fraudulently influence the locals. At any rate, so I've been talking about us the whole time. Uh, I appreciate lots of people having knowledge, but no one's applying it. And yet, I have yet to be harmed, and I have yet, even though I'm looking, where do I jump in? How do I help here? For myself, I cannot claim my own harm. Everywhere I go, when I go somewhere, I'm just left alone. Yeah, 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 I get the looks, but I'm not that bad, not as bad as it was just months ago. And so I, I'm looking for, uh, so my, my activity now is to help people that do have a problem, that do are having harm. I actually do not see this thing in the world. Uh, yeah, I see the news of it, but I don't see it. I'm not yet affected by it. And yet I see how many people have been locked in their houses uh, complaining and not making the first simple letter. What we used to say, one letter, one stamp, one uh, demand. And you've got the administrative record started to show they don't have the jurisdiction to be saying a thing, let alone what they're going to tell you what to do. Fraud she is, is irrelevant at that point.
Okay, but that he's still being spoken to is my problem. That people think he is makes those people relevant. And I told you, I'm going to get back to the beginning here. I'm going to play some sections of a, a video. And I'm going to go through, hopefully I'll do this well enough, play some sections, and I'm going to, I'm presenting this. You can go get the link and hear it for yourself. It's those doctors in Europe that came together earlier to say, this is all wrong. This is a problem. And now they're here to tell us what I told you back last year, beginning of the year, is the needle in that haystack of noise and confusion that would be coming at us that could be implemented. They've now identified for themselves the fact of that. And I'll let a doctor do excerpts from this video. I'll play a few minutes of a few points throughout the video to let him explain to you. We've heard the term dark winter. He explains to you, as I told you last year we were coming into December, I think, 29th or some into 1st of January. I said, there's something, hindsight 2020, they're going to take 9-11, what they did around 9-11, and they're going to make it worse. They're actually going to implement the medical side, medical martial law, and they're going to implement that, like they did building into the infrastructure they needed in 9-11. Through what? Anthrax. And so he here's some, if you didn't hear it, if I said it incorrectly, not completely enough, I talk too fast or whatever, here's a doctor from another country, a set of doctors. Actually, he's the only one talking, and then there's an interviewer. Two other doctors are sitting there with him, explaining what he has found from afar about your country, what your country, United States of America, had done, has done to you, and is going to continue to do, and then brings up the global scale of this. And so listen to this. Listen to the needle in the haystack that appears that's being built up right now to be pulled out, found by those that put it there, and come and stick everybody in the eye with it. This is a part of the problem I'm having. Not enough record was made, and I don't know what else will, in the mentality of people isn't yet such that it's going to be able to stop it. They have you right in a position where your response, I keep telling you, that your response, you do the, exactly the wrong thing. In fact, that, what, that Nashville bomber uh, explosion, whatever that story is, I'm, I'm keeping it, I'm just watching. That kind of got evaporated from the news cycle, apparently. It's very interesting. But if you look at that, uh, last Sunday when I did some information, looking at some information, the thing that was claimed upon him to be something he didn't want, which was 5G, and his supposedly, supposedly, his explosion was to interfere with 5G, maybe, as you heard me say, may be the very thing that hastens 5G. And this is what I keep trying to tell you about understanding the battlefield, and be careful your actions don't actually bring on the thing you fear. This is, gonna, this is taking a different, you have to take a different view about all this. Anyway, to this, our protests will be used against us. And I've told you long ago, don't get in the streets and protest. You've got to get a lot more effective. And I don't see that response, but here we go. Let me. It's called Dark Winter Explained. I'm not getting lost in the term. It's a fact. It's sitting out there. We're looking at a methodology, and they're going to tell you what I told you was the needle may be on the horizon for us. Why? Because they got you to, to break. You never responded. But you resist, you squirm, and they don't even want you doing that. Let me start here, and we're going to go through about four or so different sections of this video. But this mass uh, panic, what was created then by the governments and by the media was anthrax, 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 like now, corona, corona, corona. And, well, they created a law in December 2001, and this is nearly exactly the law that happened now in Germany on the 18th of November 2020. So, and this was the Model State Emergency Powers Act with the draft of December 21, 2001. So, it looks like that the Antrix event in 2001 is like a blueprint of this uh, corona virus in 2020. And we have a lot of other similarities and code words 
Interestingly, so we know from the anthrax, yeah, it was not foreign attack, it was a domestic. And this is official, even the government uh, of the United States. They say, okay, this anthrax attack was not a foreign attack, it was a domestic attack. Because in December 2001, uh, there was a scientific investigation and it came out that the anthrax came out of the U.S. Army lab for 100%. And there, the government admitted this. So what happened? All the mass media panic was coming from 100% down to 0%. Most of the people didn't know and can't remember of the anthrax yet. There was something. So there's your dark winter being spoken, anthrax, medical. They set the stage. They got all the law. You hear the same law being written for 2011, 2001 is written in Germany and just this year. Identical. Model laws. Don't, under, don't underestimate what he's saying there. Listen to what they're saying. Model law means what? It means the Bar Association, the global occupier, purporting to impo uh, secure to you your own law, which is completely abandoned. The establishments are abandoned. It's moving on. Another section of this uh, article, of this video. Similarities because there was a simulation before, three months before the anthrax attacks, in June 2001, similar to the event 201 yes. there in summer 2019, so just three months before the corona outbreak. The planners were nearly the same. There was uh, the CIA, so the Central Intelligence Agency, was sitting uh, at the desk, they doing it openly. In That's the trick. Simulations. In both simulations, 2001 and two th uh, same 2019. People? The same people. Plus the same people. So John Hopkins University. Yeah. We're involved in both. Yeah. So, so we're, we're sitting at the desk, and it was the same uh, same man, Thomas Ingleby. Yes. Was sitting in dark winter simulation. And what's the dark winter? Well, Dark Winter was the name of the simulation in 2001, before this bio threat happened in reality. Yes. And very interestingly is, there is a man from Dark Winter, one of the planners, who had the connection to the Great Reset of today. We know what's going on now, the financial Great Reset of Klaus Schwab. Klaus Schwab, yes. The COVID-19 crisis has shown us that our old systems are not fit anymore for the 21st century. Now is the historical moment, the time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system. We can build a new social contract. In short, we need a great reset. We have to mobilize all constituents of our global society to work together. We must not miss this unique window of opportunity. And is there a direct connection between Dark Winter and Klaus Schwab? Yes. And his name is Mr. David Gergen. He was the planner of Dark Winter. He sat on the table with the Central Intelligence Agency, with the Johns Hopkins University. And now he is sitting at the board of the Klaus Schwab Foundation. So this is a Dark Winter replay in COVID-19. And we're watching what I said was happening, going to happen. Did we learn in hindsight, looking now forward into 2020, would we be understanding enough to stop it? And we haven't. But we we're still squirming. And so we see in history a replay of something that's been planned by all the same players. And it's, like I said, it's not like it's not being prophetic to watch history, if you will, repeat itself when you don't stop the criminal, when you don't step up and stop those that would seek to harm you. This is the problem of, well, you, you can be peaceful, but at some point someone wants to come and attack you because they think they they have the the authority. They've, they've taken it from you. Now, this is next step, step is where you're going to respond wrongly by protesting. And this once they've set this up, because you didn't hit the prerogative that they're going to be given, that they've already have, and systemically, everything you do becomes reverse of your intention. That what the response they use is like a key to like I've been saying they've been used. They'll use this action against you. Your resistance in the ways you will choose will be the ones that they will use to exploit in order to stop you further. 
In this simulation, Dark Winter, it was all about a real deadly agent, like an anthrax. So COVID-19 is not a real deadly agent, but Dark Winter is. And Joe Biden announced Dark Winter is coming. So what does it mean for us? What does it mean for just, just on that point, you know, hypothetically speaking, could you imagine a situation where a real deadly virus were, were, were to be released, perhaps by a terrorist attack or whatever, but a real deadly virus were released? What would happen then? <coughs> what would happen then, folks? This is the pin, the, the needle in the haystack I was talking about. What if a real one is put out there? I've been saying this is a simulation. They haven't proven different. I would wish that they would. We'd like to know what it is. But what if that, that needle is in that haystack the whole time? The interviewer asks that in this. This is what I found so powerful. These people in another country have come on to what I was telling you last year. Was I was hoping we'd see it and we would respond. Because this is deadly serious. Deadly serious. Next uh, part of this uh, to be spoken to here. Of course, so it would polarize the population, it would set one half of the population against the other half of the population. Exactly, yeah. and then they could point the finger and say, well, you've seen, we told you all the time, yeah, wearing masks, social distancing, yeah, and it's you to blame for. I see. Well, okay. this What's is... The answer to that, What's, how, could, how could people... Mm counteract that what yes and i want to close with this uh, how we can con counteract mm -hmm. so we as a uh, world freedom alliance we are prepared to look into these things scientifically mm -hmm. evidence-based mm -hmm. like in uh, the year 2001 there was uh, a good professor from arizona who, his name was paul khan and he got out that this anthrax was uh, coming from the u.s army itself and if there would be you now a situation with a dark winter deadly virus threat if we would see very sick people or dead people we need to investigate is this agent really from where it comes from yeah. So this is what we've been focusing on. Where are the officials? See, their solution is as scientists to search it down. My response was we need to make sh train the officials to identify the infectious agent. If you don't have them doing their job and you don't have them trained, they end up just doing what they've done. They go to the criminals to take the information from them and then impose it upon you as an authority under the color of lawful authority. And so the solution the scientist has is to do what? Study some more. When it comes to the real thing, you're going to need to force, and no one's going to be able to do this yet, I haven't seen it all year, force the local official to do what the duty and obligation is. This was not just some legalism I'm talking to you about. Oh, we can argue with or we can present the fact that they're just derelict in their duty. This is a matter of life and death if they make this a live virus, a live thing, a real thing. This doctor, if you did, didn't, I hope you heard it, don't miss this. He said he, his estimation is this is not a thing. And so what they're saying here and what I've been feeling the last few weeks the next stage of this could be coming on. The needle may be coming from the, from the haystack, I was saying, is being confounded by the noise you've heard all year. And so we now hear, consistent with this ability to, we see it in, again, we go back to the, to the Tennessee petition, and it speaks to this in pointing out these people have brought themselves a foundation of endless emerging diseases. It, it's the a pretty, these people are pretty evilly brilliant about how they figured this out, but they can make this thing change and keep you in fear. The fairy tale. They tell you the fairy tale, and you get scared and afeared, and you, you're paralyzed. You don't respond. Well, you can yell out, you can complain, but you're not going to actually respond to defend yourself like this was a real condition, even when it becomes real. You're going to be flat-footed if they pull this out. At least if you're engaging the system and the failures, you're going to have a better handle on them not being able to pull out another fraudulent 
emerging disease. Because the next one may not be dark winter. It may not be real, even though that was not real. But you need to be, set up a system that you can identify that for your own self-preservation. Not just the real thing that could come and kill you, which I have a hard time believing generally if we look in the world and all the time that's spent. Well, they want to cite the Spanish flu, but that came and went. People are stronger for, for it. But now this is emerging the disease because they can they can un- synthetically mutate these things and say there's something real. And now we'll hear the last little segment here about how that's happening in the UK with Bojo talking and promoting the endlessness. And at the end of this, listen very carefully, the World Health Organization philosopher will tell you it's inevitable. How does he know it's inevitable? And don't miss the fact when he says pandemic, that's a term that they continually change the definition for, like all these other things. That these people are the criminals, the global criminals. They're all part of it, and none of us have stepped up, a few, but none of us have yet stopped what's an obvious fraud on an obvious felony, a bunch of felonies, relative to even a simple paragraph of black and white code. We have the ability to do something here, and I'm hoping that we, we still rise to that occasion. If they're, what they're talking about is the execution of Dark Winter today through something tomorrow, literally tomorrow, we won't be prepared. And I don't know where this ends up going to keep us, free us back up. We're going to be, we will be out of the ability to respond. Our, Our minds will not, we're not functionally capable to do it now. Our minds will have been controlled by fear. It'll just be simply that much. And you'll really have to be the one that stands up and you're going to be slapped down really quickly. There's no one that will tolerate what you're about to say. And so, again, if we don't set that record in people's mind, the counter, the valid counter, you just look like a protester that's wanting to be, that you need to be slapped down and what? Put into a concentration camp because you're an unknown vector, right? But here here it is from uh, UK, the idea that this is going to continue, just like I said it was last year, just like the documents have said we've reported, about the endless emerging diseases are how man-made synthetic diseases are going to be foisted upon you. It seems that the spread is now being driven by the new variant of the virus. The new variant of COVID-19 that is spreading across the globe. The United Kingdom feels like Plague Island. With two new coronavirus strains, the other from South Africa. Fortunately, it's going to be quite a dark winter. 2020 has shown that governments must increase investment in public health. From funding access to COVID-19 vaccines for all people, to making our systems better prepared to prevent and respond to the next inevitable pandemic. The inevitable pandemic, the next one. It's the endless disease scenario. What's going to be real and what's not going to be real is going to be the other thing that we're going to be helpless to decide as they keep moving this along because most people are not challenging it. And I mean in mass, not just protesting on the, again, the steps of every Capitol building. No, you start to cause them to have to deal with you in a more substantial way. It sounds, as I said last week, it sounds frivolous to think paperwork can do anything. That's your license. That's your legitimacy for being there. And if you tie it to substantial organic establishment, whether or not you truly agree with that totality, that's the only objective anchor you have to stop these people. And I've told you why that is over years, how I came to understand that when I finally got into the mining law and found out They, you know, it was the environmentalists, so-called, that were the first to acknowledge that the 1866 load law, the 1866 mining law, the 1872 was too powerful. They didn't say that until I stepped in to help people and explain through the mining district, uh, well, the pre-district, the association, how miners, how property owners are protected in the law. 
that once they saw the idea of the grants that you are given to protect you, they don't say given in that, though you're handed some largesse, you've earned that. Those were handed to you as evidence to protect you, those givens. The issuances, I should say, of the document of, of title to what you have. Those were grants that foreclosed the grantor from ever affecting you. And you see that in the patents when it says forever. When you appreciate what I've talked to you and quickly mentioned the Sparrow case in 1864, decided in 1865, that said when the miners went out west and took just took over the whole west to find gold and whatever else that's silver, they were let to be there by Congress, and the judicial, judicial decision was that Congress then forbear the people to take the minerals and could not respond to stop them is the same class of authority the people have that we can invoke in us again today. So I want to credit here Oracle Films coming up with another valuable insight. It's a people, foreigners to the United States, identifying what I told you last year was coming on us, utilizing documents of the history, the experience, replicating the thing for them that's happening identical in paperwork today in orders and emergency things, extending onto the world this method of destruction and to conform your life into the new normal. What is you being an animal that's threatening the rest? You can let that roll off your back like water off a duck's back, or you can understand what I just said. These people mean business when that philosopher says this is the opportunity and that the government needs to fund corona vaccine, vaccines and prepare and be prepared for the next inevitable pandemic. That is nothing more than saying we have endless emerging diseases and uh, and we're going to decide what a pandemic is. As I've explained, they've changed that definition at least three times. And that's just in this last year when they did it once before in pig's fly flu. These are moving terminological targets. You need to stop that. And this is why if you can go back over to the Tennessee petition, you're going to see a short list of terms being written out to say this is what these terms actually mean, cutting through the ability of the government official to obfuscate, to cover, to blow smoke into the room, to cover up what they're actually doing, how they're actually doing. And so I, I can't appreciate what Oracle Films presented there. To get the information out, you need to see the, the totality of that conversation. They're telling you what I said last year was have, could be the, the needle that may be p plucked out to poke the rest of us in the eye completely. That is given a name now. And I've identified here last week by name, and after thinking about it a couple of weeks, when it came to me to think about it in this regard, because it's kind of hard to, I wonder sometimes of these analogies correct, that the Holomador example for famine relative to extending it to famine from famine onto not just famine, but your way of life, everything about your way of life, keeping from that from you, a famine of your normal way of life, your health, your, your safety, your actual safety, your security, your property, your happiness, is that model repeated again. And so this was not hard to come up with. This is not something that I guess I can feel I could ever tell anybody could not see. And I ring, bring up a, here on the end of this now, I bring up a, another Twitter that I put out. Back to Thomas E. Woods, we're speaking to American, accept, American accept, accept, exceptionalism. I can't even say the words. I talked to you, I mentioned it before. Thomas Wood, brilliant guy, a lot of good ideas. But he, he too will fall short on this. You speak to an idea without having the substance of being able to keep it. And my response to his, to a post of a statement that he's made, his definition of American exceptionalism, I say if people don't take private action as to fraud 19 controls, such as prosecuting a writ of habeas corpus for fraud, 
failure of local official to obey law and determine the infectious agent because there is no test, there will be left, capital L, there'll be left, comma, no American's exceptionalism to a man or a woman. This is what Santa Claus Genghis Khan Schwab is telling you and supported by the philosopher that says you're going to be susceptible to the inevitable pandemic, none of which has any basis in reality. However, we're dealing with an insanity that has befallen every, almost everyone. And if it, first of all, secondly, some aren't so susceptible, but aren't responding to the conflagration of this against them, each one of us. And until we do, those few of us that do stand up in protest will be dealt with fairly handily, I suppose, it seems to me. As this thing gets locked down tighter and tighter, no one's challenging the authority to do all this. And so it continues where we see Fauci, Fauci says mandatory COVID vaccines possible for travel and school. What's the possible? It's that consent and trust. But it's not just you saying, I don't trust and I don't consent. It's that you taking action to, so that you don't have to say, I don't trust and consent. That you're saying, no, you're doing what the law is. And when you did the law, what is, there's nothing for me to respond to. That you didn't respond caused me to get active. Now I have, now you've got the problem. Don't let this guy have his way with you. If you don't respond correctly, they will be able to put these so-called mandatory things on you. Possible for travel and school. How is that not infringing on your right to locomotion, your right to travel, what you think is the right to travel, your right to make a livelihood, your right to be happy? Where did this guy, this pipsqueak, get that kind of a power that you allow that just by hearing that? Santa Claus Schwab, Genghis Khan Schwab, those stakeholders in his own, at your door, knocking at your door, actually in your kitchen, getting ready to jab you in the arm. How can you allow that? Especially after listening behind the woodshed. On There's things you can do. Forever, however naive that sounds to be to you to do, there's still something you can do, something that you can show the evidence and place something into a question that eliminates the absolute authority that's being wielded in the absence of that evidence of your action. Now, because vaccines will be mandatory, but not only that, but they won't care how they administer them. UK allows mixing COVID-19 vaccines as experts warn of risks. Well, do I need to say more? Mixing vaccines. Mixing vaccines. Is this even possible, folks? Just folks, on the basics of this, how is the chimp jab? I've talked about these things and why it shouldn't be too out of your thoughts. How is a chimp jab from Oxford consistent with an mRNA experimental, never seen before type thing that they can give the first dose as an mRNA and the second the chimp jab? Let's get past all the harm they're going to do, or even the types of harm. How do you do that, that the U.K. officials are allowing the mixing of these vaccines from first dose to second dose? That that this on its face is they don't have a clue what they're doing, didn't care to have a clue, don't care about you, are not looking to your welfare. And really in the U.K., I would say this is about all you need when they went here they proved that the vaccines, as experimental and as dangerous as they are, even if I don't argue that, they have no clue on how to address they, what they were doing. And if they're going to do this, not only do they want you harmed, but when the real thing, the dark winter they're claiming hits, because Biden says it's going to happen, the real thing that uh, Gates and his wife giggle about, oh, the next one, they're going to listen to the next one. Yeah. That dark winter comes on you, and they're doing this. Look, God save us. God save us, because there's nothing else going to. Nothing else. I don't even know what to more say than the title. They want to mix these vaccines. How do you even do that? 
How do you take the totally different technologies that they claim was so hard to do, individual, independent minds working to come up with the savior vaccine that aren't the same, and that you can somehow mix those two and expect they're going to have known results? I'm not even talking yet about the 2.79% at high impact events that are happening that they agree to as well. So let's go look at the flu. What's the deal here? Why are they doing all this vaccine and we can mix them? Maybe they don't mean anything, right? Maybe they just prove the vaccines don't do a thing. Well, except make you susceptible to some long-term health problem. But I went just to quickly, what's the flu level? I can't even find it anymore. No, no, it's got to be COVID. Why? Because that's what it is. It's not a novel thing. If I went down to the COVID, you get a link, you go down, and it looks to me that we're looking to go right to the bottom. There's hardly, there's influenza A, remember, and influenza B. There's hardly anything going on. Hardly anything. I'm wondering where it's at. Like I told you, I don't know if anybody's sick around this area. Not not since October, when the system, when the season starts, even till now. I've been asking around, haven't found it. But you look down at this slide, roll, scroll on down to the bottom. And I look at a little chart, unless I'm seeing wrong, maybe someone can advance to me the thing. Nice pretty lines and pretty pictures and all kinds of things with all the seasonal charts. Shows pretty much the same type of a wave. One's a little bit delayed, but who cares? It's not what we're talking about. We're looking at this week. It's down just a tad bit above 1%. In fact, they want to inject millions of people with something that has adverse impacts, not even responding to a flu or common cold. Not even giving the snuff, stuffly heads stuff, fever things. No, way worse. Anaphylaxis. You stop breathing. You stop. Your body stops. Goes into shock. Twice as much, folks. From this little chart, if I'm seeing correctly, as even the flu will do for you. Cannot be a people that anybody that wants to is looking out for your welfare. The uh, the officials of which that agree to this have got to be criminals. This type of incompetence is a deadly incompetence that no one responds to is uh, quite quite astonishing, I guess. guess. It's the only thing I keep coming up. I don't have adjectives for this, folks. I just don't. And so that's the people coming in and giving you these nonsensical things. Well, we'll mix it all up. It doesn't matter. It's all experimental anyway. What did I see a meme go through? It was Sally Mayweather. We're going from goats, sheep, I think it was, sheep to guinea pigs. Yes, very very astute. Now what are you going to do about it? But here we are. I'm telling you, you're going to start being protesters, and they've got the net quite wide when they can go from healthy people to whomever just by your mere association, by contact. We see New York State Assembly Perry wants detention centers for sick. Now, the title is important to understand. He knows what the authority is over. It's over the sick. The ones that are found after a report by a doctor or health professional to be having the symptoms of something that's on a communicable disease list. Where am I getting all this? It's right in your statutes, how I learned it. The legislature was there before me to help me understand what the heck happens. And what's to happen? And that then may get the report to the health official, which will then investigate deeper. Not the PCR test. will investigate completely. That's a case. None of which has been done. But this bill goes even further as they start tightening the the vice on you. As you be quiet. You think you're in your house safe. Authored by Democrat, Democratic member of the New York State Assembly, Nick Perry, Bill A416 calls for the removal and or detention of individuals who are identified as a case, contact, or carrier of a contagious disease. Now, if you listen to the last year and you understand that they just fabricate and get you to sign up into being a case contact or carrier. You are missing this trick. You're missing how the vice is being rolled down. You're also missing what I've told you is the answer to it. He knows that it's over the sick. 
They've expanded the definition to include case to be a PCR test. That's not. You don't have that answer, you lose. You want to resist, you're going to a camp. You're a contact, just passing by somebody. That's a contact. How are they partly going to do this? Unless it's surveillance camera and IDing you, it's by your phone. Or a carrier. Carrier is considered actually determined after the report of a case. That's the final decision that you are. Okay, so if you look at very carefully, case and carrier, car, uh, carrier, the case isn't yet determined. The carrier is. That is a sick one. But to add case and contact without qualification is a violation of their own communicable disease code. I, be, I guess they're saying this is going to amend that. That they just have to see that you are, all you protesters, they'll just call you all a contact. And you will be put into a detention camp. And if you don't step up and are, and decide and discuss this and, and explain to them how they don't have this power or step up as a, as a people and say, this is not the power we extended to you. This is the type of um, constraint they're willing to put on everybody. The answer to you that I've been giving you for over a year now is to attack the contagious disease that they didn't find it. You can't be, you might be able to be a case, but they had to have a report based on the communicable disease symptoms that were legitimate. You attack that. Now, there's two points. You have an administrative attack here, even against this law, if you go with what I've been telling you. Then you have your habeas corpus. Okay? That's still here to do. And if you don't, I'm telling you, that if they extend this out and make it work, you're going to need to have one of those in your pocket. You may have to have a couple of them. They'll probably steal the first one. That'll give you the clue how, de how criminal they are you get, so you can protect the second one. Make sure it gets to where it needs to go. You need to have people who are understanding where, that that's happened to you who can file for you. And so th this is slowly coming down. The, the dark winter was, it doesn't necessarily have to be anything. You've agreed to, the, to a, a fraud, a fiction, the fairy tale. You've agreed to that. So they don't have to make it. They don't have to pull the needle out. But they can if they they, they they can if they need to. And so this is as it steps along, steps along, locks down, locks down, without responding, the people don't respond, they just complain. This is the kind of thing that sets the stage, establish the ability to take out anybody, any remainder, any remaining people who are not compliant. This is uh, legislate enacting a condition that we're seeing already working in Australia over a few months ago when we talked about that. And I want to address it now moving into, uh, they've done this on what? Getting to that contagious disease. An article I will give you to you so you can read it yourself. The COVID virus has been isolated many times. This is the fraud. The word isolated, I'll give to the point you can read how this works. He, do, he says the Coke postulates are not valid in certain ways and read for those. Maybe they're not. Uh, that doesn't matter to me at, at this point. I want to see did you uh, to certify the, the, the contagion, that they certify the cause, it, it, uh, get right to the point. Why? Because the law, the black and white said that the, the authority had to have authority, they have to have that jurisdiction delegated to them. It has to be on something, not a guess. This link says the COVID has been isolated. You need to know the word isolated is not the finding of the, of the contagion or, or the vector, the thing, the infectious agent. We could be dealing with bacteria or anything else. Isolating in this sense, and the fraud is, they make, like the word case is a PCR test, they make the fact they did a PCR swab, and it's on the swab, that sample, as an isolation of the virus. And yet they've missed the, we've missed the trick that nothing was identified that they have on that swab, in fact. It's a magic trick happening right in front of your face. The three-cup money, where's the pee? The pee in a cup. I wrote about this way back in 1999. The pee in a cup. Pee in a cup. It's a game. The pee's not even in there. And you're falling for it in 2021. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. At any rate, here we go. As we see COVID changing our world in from the inside, said so the cancer's on the inside. We have no other evidences. And this is interestingly consistent with Another thing that's happening in the Tennessee case where the uh, where uh, David Tulis is attacking the lack of equity in the state of Tennessee as well as prosecuting the case 
to in, just to get the law to be complied with by the public official that in Virginia, I found this fascinating because we had just done this study relative to what the bar association is doing behind the scenes to change the rules within these states. The bar association members, of which every judge is, you don't you don't become get into this place unless you're part of the occupying force and a member and subject to what its holdings, its organization, which has what promote agreed since 1991 to promote sustainable development, the very thing that you're being imposed with in the so-called Great Reset. This title was struck me. I I started to chuckle actually. How consistent this is when you start to see what the news means. Otherwise, symbols and subtle oppression, quote, Virginia judge orders removal of portraits of white judges. Judge David Bunt Barnhart is a jurist in Fairfax County, where I reside, the author, and has issued a controversial order that the portraits of white judges must be removed from the court from the court from a courtroom because their presence would deny a black defendant a fair trial. I'm going to end there. The point here is not even the pictures. It has to do with all the bar associations in, I think it was Tennessee, gained to, came together to petition the, the Tennessee Supreme Court on to eliminate race within their own systems. And they made a, wanted a special rule to be for the Supreme Court to agree to, for their private organization to be able to make it a public rule that racism would be limited to some extent. Was my view saying that that's a private organization making public their private policies and their inadequacies. That this speaks direct, this story speaks directly to that in a different state. Inside the system, there's already the cancer and the idea, and people are working to start to do what? Take out your culture. It might be that maybe we shouldn't have any pictures sitting in a courtroom, but because they were white, that's, that is racism. The very thing they're trying to stop, what they claim that they're stopping. And so, the reflection throughout this country of the cancer that I find everywhere, just depends on how you look at this, is consistent by, to one organization, as I've been talking all, all along, and allowing the very harms upon you that will not give you the law as most, some of you who have tried to fight the system, so-called fighting it, and so-called the system. It's not that at all. And it wasn't supposed to be a fight. That's our problem. Have found the occupier sits there to to uh, obstruct you. And it's the same type of thing. I looked at Virginia in the Second Amendment condition, so-called sanctuary counties, which really was the misfocus. That was that whole thing was misfocused on purpose, and people followed that that fairy tale. Oh, you're going to lose. If you don't do this sanctuary city, you're going to lose this. No, no. You had all the power in the Constitution to blow right past that and get right to the heart of the matter is the answer. And that's the other problem with COVID is they got so many people afeared. We have, although we do now see 50% of the people in the UK, maybe that'll correlate to the United States. 50% of all those people are on our side, if you will, to try and not to say, oh, COVID vaccines are not bad, not good. No, I want to find the infectious agent. As, as the doctor in Germany says, we want to identify the real thing when it comes, don't we? What I told you last year. Now, I'm going to move it and change, uh, change speeds here. Something very important, something came down moving from COVID, moving into COVID-related in that there's a name for a bill that was a COVID bill that just passed, which has penalties now. I want to move into now talking back in the beginning about censorship and how this was building into this. We now see in this bill that Trump was not going to pass, and then he did sign or something, or maybe I got it wrong and he did veto it, and then the Senate agreed to put on y'all that there is an illegal streaming bill shoehorned into the COVID relief bill. Well, that's right. This is the COVID release, not the appropriations bill. So there's an illegal streaming provision, which is the copyright holders are going to have more power. They're going to turn this into the into an arbitration condition that gives the people with copyright authorities or claims more power to get their 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 stuff get what they think is theirs from our theft, if we have any. 
if you hear the behind the woodshed, I I've, I don't never ever have used copyrightable uh, copyrighted material, and and I don't even put fair use because I never use it. But it, it, to the point that I do, it has been within any fair use. In fact, we got you know to show you how corrupt this is. Remember that cricket sound that I played a while back. Uh, showing it, we're just a long-term cricket thing. I can't remember now what it was about. A company made a claim on that 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 was their property. In fact, that was actually gotten from a professor who let get it gave it out. So the company that took a copyright on music was actually stealing it from that professor who gave it out to make money on it. He let it out for educational purposes. And so a false claim was made on my broadcast using that that cricket sound, just a cricket sound. Because it was the same sound as a song. They had hijacked it. And so this is, I can just see how this is going to go down the tube. I want to also say, and I don't know if, I, no, I'm going to say this, uh, I was talking with Jules once in an email who mentioned, and this is the importance of the censorship, why I'm going to talk about it. She may not be able to continue broadcasting uh, the home channel of UCY TV because of the, a bill like this. Why? Because people don't want to be cognizant of the fact of the threat to the, now it's going to be every website that broadcasts would may be susceptible to be brought into court to have to defend themselves on a copyright claim. And you've seen how badly they'll do the, the exception, how they won't do the fair use correctly. And so we're looking at another dark time here relative to publishing information and being called in. And this has all been allowed, and I saw this is a very difficult thing to see relative to what our rights are and things and what will be attacked on, whether or not they are our rights. People make false claims all the time. All the time. I'm not sure what the penalties are against that. But I wanted to move on. Two more links that I'll just talk about quickly. I want you to see two links to videos of a gentleman named Yuri Bezmanov. Uh, and his, the name that he picked was Thomas Schumann uh, from a long time ago who explains how the Soviet, how communist, how all this communism, uh, communalism is, was how it gets foisted on a, on a population over a few generations. You need to listen to that because that last story about the bills that are coming in are the, your Congress and your Senate and all your government turning into a so-called Soviet that is happening on the uh, instrumental arm that will be executed, that will give the power to these people that have got you over on a fairy tale, are going to be able to use other things in different aspects of your life. Notice also that's in commerce, this copyright. And so you're going to, if you didn't think about looking carefully before, I'm telling you this is coming down where your whole way of life is being constrained and the government is there to hurt you. And I don't see it any different than the famine of your way of life, as in Holomador may have explained to us strictly to the Soviets, what the Soviets did to the Ukrainian people and how they took out their food, how we're doing the same thing with COVID, how it's happening, how they do it right before you, and how as a society we're so far behind. It's it's scary. It's just, it's a bit scary. And I'm still, notwithstanding that, I'm not going to be afeard I'm going to try and know as much as I possibly can. I'm going to learn, brush up on my remedies, try to help other people who want to, and see if we can assert this back just in time, folks. This is like I said, it's, we might be in that last bit of a foot race. They don't mean you well. They, you can see it throughout. And to be silent on this was at least letting the next guy get hurt if you're not there yet. But it's certainly going to come to your door. They're not going to tolerate much of anything. Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. And maybe the best, last island of place for us to be broadcasting as this thing comes on uh, and to defend from, I'm not so sure. We'll see. And uh, everybody who can uh, syndicate the broadcast, I thank you very much for doing so. You're going to probably need to be protective of yourself, uh, so be careful of that. And I'll be with you next week, tech diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>